Hello, welcome back to my tech farm. I'm Igor and in this video I want to answer a lot of questions which I got regarding these three printers. This is Solar SP06, this is Ender 3 S1 Pro and this is Prusa Mark 3 S. And what is common with this printer is that they are able to print on 300 degrees Celsius, so they have an all metal hot end. But uh, I got so many questions and now I will go step by step. I have already a list here and uh, you can see this list a link in the description of the video because I can change that if necessary. So it is on mytech1.com website and let's go step by step. So first of all, the price. Huge difference immediately. Uh, Solar SV06 is $300 uh, and the 3 S1 Pro approximately $480. And Plus and Mark VS, the assembled version, is uh, at this moment $1,160 approximately. Of course, uh, with the Plus, we can buy a kit, but with that kit, uh, we have to assemble it, and uh, it takes about um, maybe 10 hours. About the printing quality, that's the next step. They are very equal, so I could show you some footage of benches or anything from all three printers. They are very, very similar, so basically I couldn't notice any difference in printing quality. About the design, mm, I don't know, I asked my wife actually about this. Between 1 and 5, the Ender 3 S1 Pro got uh, 4 stars. Prusa and SV06, uh, 3 from 5. Uh, about the design, so I'm not sure is it so relevant, but uh, yes, it's on my list too. Assembly, approximately in half hours we can uh, almost have them running. Uh, the Prusa, if we buy it, uh, assembled. If we buy a kit, already mentioned, so even I needed, uh, that was my first printer, 10 hours to assemble uh, Prusa Mark III kit. Mm, spool holder, uh, Solo SV06 has uh, one spool holder, uh, and the 3S1 Pro also has one, but it is rotating, it's rolling and uh, Prusa it has uh, two holders but it is also fixed. Build volume is very similar, not really equal. Uh, 220 and 220 on uh, these two in X and Y direction. Only Ender 3 has a little bit higher uh, in Z volume. Uh, until the Prusa it has 250 and 210 in X Y direction and only 210 in Z direction. Auto bed leveling sensor. Uh, Sovol and Prusa has the inductive sensor. Ender 3 has some Pro has the sear touch. Now about this inductive sensors, how important is it? I don't know. I noticed that they are faster, but I got some comments that uh, they noticed that with the SV06 it depends a lot of uh, from the temperature. Mm, but I didn't notice any bigger problem with this. Of course, with inductive sensors, we always have to uh, set to calibrate it if we change the print sheet. For Plus, I have at least, I don't know, four or five uh, different sheets and always has to check and set the uh, so-called live Z, some kind of uh, Z offset, if I change the sheet. Until the sear touch, it is a little bit slower, not so accurate, I measure that uh, as the inductive sensors, but it always measures the top of the surface. So I could place here even the glass or anything, it will always touch the top of the surface and that will be a trigger for this uh, auto leveling sensor. About the homing, uh, Sobol and the Prusa has that sensorless homing until the NSC S1 Pro has those uh, mechanical switches on X, Y uh, direction. Of course, uh, in Z direction it uses a sear touch. To be honest, I didn't notice any big difference between these two methods. Uh, maybe if you have some other experience, you know, you can write me if you want in the comment section. Nozzle temperature, I already mentioned that uh, it is 300 degrees Celsius on all three printers. Now the maximum bed temperature, 100 degrees Celsius on the Solon and 110 degrees Celsius on Ender 3 and the Prusa. About bed heat thermal insulation, only Ender 3 S1 Pro has some insulation from the bottom of the bed surface until the Solon and Prusa are open from the bottom. Bed mounting, uh, interesting, so the Sovol and the Prusa has the fixed bed. With the Ender 3 S1 Pro we have those uh, springs and uh, this means that we have a little bit more job with the leveling. So we have to do the manual bed leveling too. This means that uh, to make this surface parallel with the moving pad of the nozzle. And later the auto leveling sensor will compensate any inaccuracy. This means a little bit more job with the leveling of this uh, printer, but uh, I think the Creality chose a little bit safer solution because if uh, some mistake 
we change the bed into higher something like that and another hits the bed it still uh, can compensate a little bit with those springs because they, they can compress a little bit and um, avoid the bigger damaging the build plate the bed surface well, the sole and the uh, ender three arrived with these textured PI sheets. I really like them. The Posa it arrived with this uh, smooth PI sheet, which I use mostly for uh, PLA. For PTG, I have here separately the textured PI sheet. But what is big difference is that uh, this PI sheet is two-sided. Now there are small things which make the Prusa a little bit different. For example, positioning of this sheet is very accurate thanks to these two pins. And I can very easily uh, place the sheet in just a second on exact place and in that case actually I can use these uh, grid lines for example if I want to place uh, a glue stick uh, only from one small area and I can see it in a slicer where I have to place that uh, glue stick so positioning of the sheet is here very accurate until here I have to watch the edge of the heated plate and approximately I can place then the build surface here so these are those small differences which uh, makes the Prusa uh, better printer compared to this, but uh, let's continue now. Z auto line. Uh, Sowell and Prusa has that uh, mechanical Z auto lining uh, with G34 command. This means that it will lift the X gently higher with a low current and it will hit the uh, top holders. And if there is any uh, inaccuracy, it will uh, press it and uh, one of the stepper will skip and then the other will be aligned. Uh, this is the only method because uh, both printers use the same stepper motor driver for two Z-axis motors. Until the NS3 S1 Pro, it also used one stepper motor driver for two uh, stepper motors on Z-axis, but uh, it is connected with the timing belt. So even if the, the printer is powered off, uh, we cannot independently move one side or the other side and uh, they will stay synchronized. LED lights, well, uh, from this way, uh, and the 3 S1 Pro has these uh, LED lights, which are quite useful if you don't want to turn off the, the light or maybe we want to see better that printing. For camera, it is not so helpful for <laughs> YouTube videos. I'm not using this LED, but in real life to supervise the printing or something like that, uh, very useful. Mainboard, Sowell and Ender has uh, 32 bit boards. Prusa used the 8 bit board, but for some reason I cannot really notice any problems with that. So they really use the maximally the possibilities of, of this board. Uh, so basically, theoretically, it's the advantage of these two printers, but it's not really disadvantage on the Prusa. Stepper motor drivers. On all three cases, they use the silent stepper motor driver, so we don't have that peak sound from the stepper motors during the moving. Are you familiar with the problem of CD printing in spiral or waste mode and enable power loss with some function on ender printers? Well, we don't have this kind of problems on Prusa or SV06. On earlier SV04 the problem was there, but uh, on new SV06 everything is fine. Now the power loss function. Another small thing which makes the Prusa a little bit different from these two. I'm not sure how they do it, but uh, in the last four years only two times I had uh, power loss during the printing on the Prusa. And uh, in both cases, I noticed that the head moved from the printed object. So it has just a little bit more power when I had the power loss to move. Because uh, when actually uh, we have the power loss uh, during the printing, in that case, the nozzle will be stick to the bed. And we want to resume the power of the power loss. Usually the nozzle wants to do some homing in X and Y direction to check its uh, real position. And with this, uh, very often it may happen that it will move or break the object during the printing. So that's a very useful uh, option. I'm not sure how they do it. Maybe you can write me in a comment line down. But again, a small big plus for the Prusa. Of course, don't forget with this power loss function, if the bed cools down, in most cases, if you didn't use the glue stick, probably the object will uh, be detached from the bed surface. So it is only useful if the power loss is only a few minutes, for example. The screen, some will use the 22864 graphics screen. The Ender 3 SM Pro used a quite nice uh, touch screen. And uh, Prusa, it used the 2004 screen. Looks a little bit outdated, but... Uh, I don't know, it's fine. Of course, uh, more modern is the touchscreen, but if the touchscreen is not like on smartphone, then I like better these kind of solutions with the rotating button. Plastic parts. Uh, so I use injection molded plastic parts even for the holder of the head, which I'm not too happy about. And then it used this metallic plate 
uh, and for, to that metallic plate this uh, extruder is attached to. Uh, plus I use uh, CD printed parts and by default they are from PETG. They work fine. Uh, I notice I have some problems especially with the extruder parts. Uh, they deform a little bit inside the enclosure. In the meantime I reprint them from uh, PC blend, uh, carbon fiber, but uh, these are still from the PETG. Only the fan shroud is from ASA because it is very close to that hot end. Movement system. Uh, well, so on and plus I use the linear rods until the uh, ender use those uh, with slot wheels. I'm not too big fan of these slot wheels, uh, it, they need a little bit more maintenance. Uh, you have to tie them correctly, everything. If you do that and you replace them after maybe a year or two of using them, then it's fine. But uh, definitely I like better uh, linear rods with the uh, linear bar bearings. I think it is important to mention that Prusa earlier used uh, very good quality Misumi bearings but I think they don't use it anymore and they're not even available as uh, spare parts on their website. Uh, the software they use uh, non-name brands, I couldn't see any brand on these uh, linear bearings. And with this actually the Prusa lost another advantage compared to the software. Uh, tensioners on the X and Y timing belts, they are very simple, very good solved on the Enders 3S1 Pro and on the Sowol, uh, very easy we can do place the tension on the timing belt. Until with the Prusa it's a little bit complicated, but good news is that basically we have to do it once and maybe we have to check that in a year or two, so uh, once we do it and then uh, for a long time we don't have to pay attention to this. But yes, definitely, if you have to do it or replace the timing belt, it is much easier on the Sowol and on the, this Ender 3. Cable management, it's okay, the cables are not in the way, so big improvements on Ender 3 compared to the older versions. Uh, on the heating bed cable, so definitely all three could learn from the artillery. Check that artillery Sidewinder or Genius Pro uh, cable for the hot bed, that, that's perfect solution. So I would like to see something like that on any of these printers. Filament sensor, well, uh, Prusa has the filament sensor and it is here in the extruder, so very short path we have between the pulleys and the sensor. On Ender 3, the sensor is up here and extruder is here, so it will be triggered much earlier. Until on the Sowol, it doesn't have the filament runout sensor, but it, it is prepared so we can buy and attach to it. Extruder, Sowol use so-called planetary extruder and the uh, gear ratio is uh, 1 to 6.5. And the 3S on Pro uh, use that Sprite uh, extruder. I'm not sure, I think the rate is uh, 3 to 1 or something like that. And Prusa, it also has of course the direct drive So that is the common with all three printers. And here we don't have any rate, I mean rate is 1 to 1. And I can see that this stepper motor on the extruder is biggest compared to these two. I mean, we have uh, if we have a bigger ratio, even with the smaller stepper motor, we can apply bigger torque enough for the pulling of the filament. Mm, part cooling, uh, they are very similar, mostly from the front. On plus, I can see on that fan shroud that they try a little bit to split that air to get partly from two sides, but I would say that here also uh, mostly from the front side. And the render 3, it is straight from the front. Toolbox, uh, interesting, uh, there is a space basically on all steel printers, but only Ender 3 S1 Pro has this toolbox, which is very useful to place those basic tools inside. Uh, about the noise, well here basically the Prusa is the quietest, because uh, it used the passive power supply unit, until this to have a fan on it. This is a disadvantage actually on the Prusa, uh, if we want to use it inside the enclosure. So even the Prusa recommends to move the power supply unit outside of the enclosure, because of its passive cooling. But also has the passive cooling, but there is no fan, is the mainboard box. On these two we have uh, cooling on the mainboard box, but here no, no. and uh, since I cannot easily move the mainboard outside of the enclosure, uh, here I added a small fan externally and with this I try to keep it cool as much as possible inside the enclosure. SD card size, Prusa and NS3 use the full size uh, SD card until the Sowol uses the smaller TF card and it's a little bit on a less comfortable space uh, here on the back side. So this is again big plus from my side on these two printers. Small things like M600 command, you know, for uh, filament uh, color change. Uh, to be honest, at this moment I checked only with the Prusa Max VS and I use it very regularly, it works fine. 
In the meantime, I checked this too. M600 works on SV06, but some operations are a little bit confusing. It wanted to load the filament immediately after unloading the previous one, but um, after this it was finished correctly. On the NS3 the M600 command stopped the printing, but after a few seconds it continued. And the only reason it stopped again is that I pulled out the filament in the meantime and the runout sensor detected missing filament. And uh, thanks to this function I could finish this operation. But if I'm not there to remove the material, the printing would continue without color change. Another small thing which gives a big plus to Prusa from my side, and that's the remaining time. It is very very accurate. Even if I change the printing speed, it will be modified, or if I insert the color change, I can see the remaining time, but also I can see the time necessary for that filament change. So I can see that, aha, uh -huh, okay, in 22 minutes I will have that filament change, so I know I can uh, get back and it will be exactly at that time. Uh, until I'm not sure how uh, the other printers works, but uh, so far this is the only printer when this uh, remaining time was very accurate. Inserting the filament. Uh, somehow I noticed for me at least on my printer it's a little bit hard to insert the filament into this extruder. I always had to, of course to cut that uh, uh, end of the filament under 45 degree angle but I always had to try which position I have to insert it until uh, with the Ender CSM Pro and Prusa it is very very easy. With these two printers we have the manual knob so we can uh, remove the tension between pulleys and we can feed it manually. Uh, with Prusa there is not such a possibility, but I think this is an advantage, because uh, most common cases when we move out of the synchronization to uh, this X gentry, the two lead screws, is when we are pressing on one side and it's not supported on the other. With N3 uh, it's not a big problem, because it is connected with timing belt. But with these printers, which are not connected and it's uh, not powered, the motors on the Z axis, if you put the filament on one side, it can easily be out of the synchronization. So that's why I like that solution that on Prusa, this was my first printer, but I never even thought about that, that I could do it manually. So I just insert uh, the filament a little bit, the extruder will pull it and it will be extruded. So I never have to push it uh, using a force on the extruder and that's why it is very rare that I have to do that uh, Z aligning. And the slicer, well, uh, actually each of these printers has their own slicer, the Prusa slicer, the Creality slicer and the Snowball slicer, but basically these two are some kind of rebranded Cura or something like that, so that's why I don't like to use them, because in that case I would rather use Ultimaker Cura, which is always up to date and I can download the latest version, and also I have several printers for the Prusa, I definitely like uh, to use only the Prusa slicer, so I don't use anything else for Prusa and basically the Prusa slicer I use only for Prusa now. And as a very short summary, if you don't need a filament sensor, the most budget friendly solution is the Sovol SV06. If you still need a budget version but with the filament sensor and big community, go with n 3 s Sun Pro because this is the most popular printer. If the price doesn't matter and if you need all those small advantages I mentioned in this video, go with Prusa Mark 3 s and uh, this was my collection, my list. I'm sure that uh, I missed something and uh, you can uh, write me a few lines in the comment section. So what should I compare to? Uh, this list will be updated on my website and I can extend it if I get some different suggestions. So uh, I hope I will get some useful comments too. Well, I hope I could help you a little bit. So thank you for watching and happy printing.